वेद प्रतिपाद्य जय जय स्वसंवेद्या सिटीज लाइक रोम पैरिस न्यूयॉर्क वॉशिंगटन एंड लंडन एंड मेनी नेशन द पॉवरफुल नेशन लाइक अमेरिका रशिया चाइना यूके फ्रांस ऑल दीज ग्रेट नेशन इंक्लूडिंग अवर इंडिया टू एंड नेबरिंग कंट्रीज आर कंप्लीटली लॉकडाउन and experiencing a horrifying silence this horrifying silence was never never felt before or was expected at all i being a teacher being a man of science i thought that what is the secret behind who is the commander who gave this command who gave this signal who had a remote control and the issue was it was the covid 19 or the corona virus hundreds of thousands of people are dying lakhs of people are affected and everyone let me tell you honestly every one of us they have a horrifying fear horrifying fear complex and possibly the fear of death but i have been always thinking that whether such a horrifying situation would repeat again how long it will continue and this corona virus which has caused this horrifying situation world over then we thought of the whole scenario you can see a very typical fearful silence on all the roads the shops the universities colleges malls everything is closed and the people have been locked down in their own houses for their own safety it is but natural but remember friends that this has been caused at the command of what is called as a corona virus i do not know and understand that this corona virus when it gave a command for the first time in the human history all the churches the temples the mosques mosques and the masjids like makkah madina too the gurudwaras and all other prayer halls and everything is completely closed it has never happened in the before in the history and normally friends remember we have never never been expecting that such a experience will be given to us in our lifetime and let me tell you friends i am trying to show you the two small booklets in my hands one is called as a bell of hiroshima ringing once again conveying the message of world peace is the name this is the horrifying situation which has experienced at the hiroshima by the first hydrogen bomb which was dropped on hiroshima nagasaki you know how many lakhs of people and how many crores of people were affected and this one hydrogen bomb initially caused this horrifying situation it has been the most dreadful experience for the world community in hiroshima but that bell i feel sincerely in the form of this corona virus is giving a signal giving a warning and the bell on his own has started ringing once again and possibly that is through this corona virus or the covid 19 uh, biological and chemical weapons are quite well known and the usage predates uh, the wars that actually starts in the human hi- history when people used to use carcasses animal carcasses throw them around just to create biohazard uh, now there are multiple kinds of biological and chemical weapons out there the statistics are in front of you just for example if you look at anthrax uh, which reaches at least 20 kilometers with a single spread has ability to kill 95000 people and impact or permanently disable 125000 people in one go so there is a massive issue of biological and chemical weapons globally we could debate on where covid stands but at the end of the day it's still a biohazard uh, so that's the why for why we are doing this also there are about 16 countries who currently acknowledge that they own biological and chemical weapons 11 have recorded the use of these weapons there is multiple cases of security breach and neg- negligence uh, closer to home bhopal happened uh, recently tuti korin happened uh, we all are very well acquainted of what biohazards are of chemicals it's also been an accelerator for climate change and accepted or unaccepted many countries have used it 
until recently in 2018 in Syria, where there were allegations made of uh, chemical weapons being used. It has been actually an honor uh, because currently for UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, disarmament is a core part of his agenda. Actually, when he took over the role, he made it as one of his primary focus goals to really create a secure future for all of us. The conference on this eradication of biological and chemical weapons, this is a first step from our side to address the man-made disaster. I don't know whether it is actually man-made or not, but let us think for a minute about what is happening with us and how are we going to control this. And we will be talking about the past, present and the future of biological and chemical weapons and the solutions, of course, towards this you know, abolishment of this particular uh, issue. The challenges at this particular time are really great and difficult. So when once we have the great challenges, we always feel that the opportunities are also great. The secret of change is to focus on our energy, not to simply fight on what happened earlier, but we need to build the new one. Both the 20th as well as 21st century have witnessed uh, you know, human progress by leaps and bounds. I always feel that it has come with a heavy cost. During the earlier century, more than 500 million people have died due to several infectious diseases. Several tens of thousands of these deaths were due to the deliberate release of you know, different types of toxins, which we all, which we all have read in different uh, textbooks and as well as you know, we have studied all these things. After the Second World War, the initiatives were taken by the United Nations to control and abolish biological and chemical weapons. This Biological Weapons Convention, popularly known as BWC, the first multilateral disarmament treaty banning the development, the production, the stockpiling of the entire category of these weapons. Of, of course, of course, we are talking about the weapons of mass destruction. This was open for the signature in, in, in 1972, exactly on 10th of April 1972. Further, of course, the review happened in 1986. Further review happened in 1991, so, so on and so forth. You know, the discussions are going on from last so many years as such. Biological weapons or the conventions have been there. The chemical convention has been there. So many wonderful decisions were taken. But they are not being implemented at all. And who is the authority? Who is the controller? Who can really tell if there is some nation who is trying to do under the name of research or development of a biological weapon, is there someone to control or guide or tell them that if you do this, the rest of the world community has to come together. But finally, by passing rules and regulations and the organizing possibly some such conference, whether this is going to help. How to really make the leaders, those so-called superpowers and the super leaders, where are they now? What are they doing? Rather, these richest of the rich people of the world who are so powerful nations, they have a lot to do with the poor people, the poor people in the whole world. There are a number of countries who are waiting for some help. But instead of giving some help to those nations, trying to minimize the poverty and their hunger, that we have so many issues. The question is, Passing some rules and regulations will it do? But I have a sincere feeling, friends, that some or the other, the whole world community has to come together. If there is some nation who is trying to play some horrifying game for proving their supremacy, for proving that they are the most powerful and most energetic, supreme nation of the whole world, that madness, I am telling you a very typical word I say, uh, India has been experiencing all these things and they have said that the richest of the rich or the most powerful people got ruined themselves because of their wrong actions, wrong attitude and trying to prove that they are the supreme possibly, I, I, I don't know, but in the future it will be very wrong and possibly the human race has to really face a horrifying situation. The time has come. When they, like an institution like United Nations has to be the most powerful. They should be given the authority to control and to regulate and to take some action jointly. The rest of the people have to join together and take a united action 
and the security council should be made aware of their responsibility their accountability maybe they are given the authority but they have to use it properly and ultimate goal is the well-being of the entire mankind the welfare of the mankind clearly the 21st century is the age of biology and i believe both the, the greatest threat and the greatest opportunity uh, for our species is in uh, biology and what we do in this field will really um, make the difference between a bountiful century and a destructive uh, century. Organizations like the World Health Organization are vital uh, UN organizations on chemical weapons, the organization, Nobel Prize winning organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons is vital. But these uh, institutions have been weakened in, in the last few years Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons has set up uh, such a capability after the uh, cases of chemical weapons use by the Assad regime in Syria. And actually, the Secretary General of the United Nations can launch an investigation, an investigation into biological um, threats or biological incidents in the world, but has not uh, exercised it in this case. Sit and decide together by the United Nations Security Council, those members who are really very powerful, gifted. To my mind, they have a big duty to perform for the poor and the needy people of the world. And India has always been talking about the principle of the world as one family. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam is the main message. So likewise, we have to look for the whole world and not separate individually. The coronavirus does not differentiate between a nation like India or America or China. They have a same common rule and possibly this will certainly affect the whole cohesive system, the orderly system of the universe and possibly create a horrifying situation for the entire world community. The most important thing is that I sincerely feel that the Security Council which was established before 75 years now, the United Nations and this Security Council which has been meant for the protection of the life and property and the life of the people itself for the world community as a whole has a duty to perform. The World Health Organization has a duty to perform. We have to ban and stop this mad race, the rat race going on for creating the horrifying weapons. Friends, uh, you must be aware of that the world over, the weapons like hydrogen bombs, neutron bombs, they can destroy this mother earth thousands of times. Such a stockpile has been created by the world community. And we are sitting on a ticking bomb, really, the whole of human race. Now the question is, we are making it ourselves. It's a man-made danger which has been created. So accordingly, at least, whether we can think of stopping under the name of research, under the name of development, these biological and chemical weapons need to be curbed. We have to stop this and give a ban on at least the, even the research in the name of virus or the biological weapons. This is a question of sustainability of the human race itself, about mother nature itself. If it is a horrifying pollution like this or some virus like this can pollute and kill the human race and the living beings, what will be the future for the whole of the world is the main issue. I will say Mother India has a role to play. And we have to take an initiative and possibly using our own methods and techniques, which are so close to the rule of Mother Nature. I think you are the people. You are the youngsters. Your future. If we make some mistakes, you are going to suffer again. And it will be our responsibility that we are not at least caution you people. But let me tell you, friends, that it is a duty. It's high time. On the background of the horrifying hydrogen bomb which was dropped on Hiroshima, which has caused the death of lakhs of people, maybe the crores of people were affected. And that bell of Hiroshima has started ringing once again. And this bell of Hiroshima is ringing once again to give the message of world peace and trying to give a warning, giving a clarion call to the entire world to think and understand the horrifying effects of what you are trying to produce. We must ban, we must really eradicate 
such impending dangers by minimizing the biological weapons production, development, or research. Under the name of research, only this coronavirus has come. That is what is being said. So, who is going to find the solution? Ultimately, it is you and me. We are the people who have a concern with the well-being of the mankind. And hence, an appeal to you, friends: ban such weapons and ban some of the research is the main appeal. Let us not forget our duty. Duty to the well-being of the entire mankind. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much. Sarve te sukhina santu, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pasyantu, ma kasid dukha ma apnuyat. Shanti, 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 Shanti.